Oh. All right, I'll start the recording and the live transcript. Uh, so we oh. don't have a lot on the agenda today. I think I'll share my screen and we'll see there's like one thing. Um, but I, I thought maybe we could we could work through a, a few things. So we do have a, a new person. So welcome, Eric. It's great to have you here. Thank you and for being welcoming. Thank you for the warm welcome. So. Yes, and and if you would like to continue to join join us in this working group, you're completely welcome. We'll see you in January, <laughs> middle of January. <laughs> no, that works out perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we got going on there. Um, I thought <clears throat> somebody else just signed. Is I, I didn't sign this. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering sorry. is who's using this account right now. I mean, they would have to be in a meeting here, I think. I'm wondering, is Ruth using it? Yeah, and maybe on a different link. I don't know if we can do that, but possibly. Okay. Are you you're still able to? Sh I guess don't don't stop sharing your screen. You might not yeah. be able to again. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah, and you can give us your thoughts on on snow. If you if you have any thoughts on snow. Are my thoughts and and actually i bought my first snowblower last year i finally decided enough's enough <laughs> i might have to get that i'm too old to shovel it, it yeah it's ridiculous like, yeah. so this will be your first year using it i want to hear how i used goes. it last winter oh yeah how was it was it worth it i mean you'll wonder why you ever shoveled i mean <laughs> yeah okay if, if we get if I, I almost never have to shovel because we get at most most of the time three inches of snow and you know that's I don't have to shovel that. What? It melts. You It'll drive over it. Oh. All snow, no matter how much, is always gone in a week, usually within a day or two. Here, so it's like you just like snowing. I do actually run a shared community snowblower for the sidewalks, but only, it's only because we have so many kids and old people on the street. And it's like a commune thing where like there's three or four people who push it on different sections for the kids and their grandparents. And and as a grandparent, thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs> so I'd like to talk um, just we do um, like we said, we have no meetings. I think I can just kind of go into prior. Uh, yeah, fair so until January 9th. And so we'll be starting back up then. Um, there is going to be a newcomer onboarding meeting that Elizabeth and Ruth often run on January 11th. Thank you. Uh, so that should be on the calendar. Um, and then, you know, I, I would just like to kind of revisit a little bit of, of these three things that we could do for newcomers. Do you remember we talked about this last time? So we've been kind of thinking about um, ways to to kind of really help newcomers just overcome <laughs> the complexities of joining an open source community, chaos being one of those. Um, I, I have I have added first time the first timers only badge and tag in uh, GitHub issues for Augur, trying to say hey you know well basically which is a commitment to just walking someone through their first contribution, so it's less less mystifying um that's from that first timers only like kent dodds or first timers only.com link but i mean i i'm not you know who knows if it'll work but <clears throat> I, I think it's helpful to give it a try cool so i you know i think what we're you know kind of if you take a look at the newcomer channel in slack it's it's long <laughs> there's a lot of people that join um Eric, we have a newcomer channel and we have a Slack, whole Slack thing. And we have a newcomer channel where we have a, a, a bot that people can type newbie in there and it'll kind of point them to a few of the resources that are available in chaos to get started. But um, I, Elizabeth, have you given some thought about this, like in terms of like a checklist for people to do? I, I don't know kind of if you've had a chance to reflect on what we talked about last week at all. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I love I really do like that idea just because um, and Eric can probably back this up but like when you join a new project you kind of want to do something like you want to have like kind of maybe something to do something to 
dig your heels in instead of, you know, it's usually we're kind of like, oh, wait till this onboarding meeting or wait till this meeting or, you know, and, and make, that kind of like loses some momentum and the excitement that you're, you know, you're here, you made it, you did it. Um, so I, yeah, I think that, um, and similar to when we have a new reviewer for our badges, we have like, a, we call it next steps or like a checklist of, okay, here's some things you can do to make sure you're just like oriented into, you know, what, you, what we do here. So I really like that idea um, and I think we are going to put that on the in the knowledge base under like a quick start. Okay. I think that was the plan to do that. Um, I do need to connect with Ruth and Shoya on that, though. I, I want to make sure we're not duplicating efforts there. Um, but do you think it needs to also maybe exist in the newcomer bot or like some kind of prompts to say, hey, have you done this yet? Or have you seen this? Or, maybe. You what know, like the, kind of just... the, the newcomer bot, how extensive is it? I haven't typed newbie in a while. Uh, it's very uh, straightforward. It just asks you, what do you want to do? Do you want to help develop metrics? Do you want to join a meeting? Do you want to participate in software? Do you want to, like, it has like six options, and then you click on that, and it tells you some resources of how you can do that thing. But it might also be nice to have it be a little more of like, I don't know, I don't want it to be annoying, though. You know, where it's just like harassing you, like, you have to do stuff. What are you, what are you lazing about? Come on. No, I don't want that. But well, maybe. Um, you know, I, I guess maybe we just start with a, a markdown file that we can kind of send people to when they are on the channel. And it would say, like, if you're brand new, here, here are some things that we just recommend that you do, whatever it might be. You know what I mean? And so step one is just come to open office hours or check out the recordings. Like just do those things first. I do we have enough behind that? Like it's something to be. I'm not I'm afraid the the newbie bot like kind of points them in directions, but it doesn't really yeah. like what yeah. to do. It's not like a path, like a guide. It's not yeah. a learning path, I think is what we're trying to sort out here. It's like a learning path. Have we yeah. recreated Microsoft Bob? <laughs> I don't know what that is. What is that? Well, well, let's not get sidetracked. <laughs> just just google it okay so i mean and what if it was what if it was literally this simple just come to office hours is so that is this, too, is too this different sorry matt sorry i didn't interrupt you no no go ahead i was gonna say is this different than, than the quick start which would literally just be like three things the quick starts like three things to do immediately and a checklist would be like okay here Here's all the things you can do. Like what I'm trying to do, what I think when we were talking about this last week is like, you, you want to become a contributor ultimately, because that's what people say when they join the newcomer channel. Like, I want to contribute. How do I do that? That's usually the, the statement that gets, it's not, I want to explore or I want to inquire. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I want to participate. And I think what this is, is like scaffolding. Like, how do we, how do we think is the best way to get somebody to contribute like what what are those those so the quick start guide to me is like here are resources that are available and maybe this is just one of those resources but this is almost like a uh yeah, like a um like a choose your own adventure kind of thing like the things you have to do <laughs> we think you should explicitly do these things to become to, to start moving into the ability to contribute and so it's it's really like these down in here too, like join a working group four times in a row. Like just attend a working group four times in a row. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> just be present. Just listen. Just see what's going on. And as we know, in our in our working groups, action items generally show up. So I mean, if I was to just write this down, like it would just be like instead of these dashes here. Can I just change these to sort of, so come to office hours. Like that's number one. Just if you're, if you're new and you want to contribute, the first thing that you, you should do is go to office hours. Not know that they exist, but go to one, <laughs> just go to an office hours, meet the community manager. Cause you're going to be there. You know, the second thing is attend a, an onboarding call or watch watch one of the previous ones, just those two things. 
that'll help you in your inquiry process. That's it. I think that, I mean, I like the lightweightness of it. And then for participating, oops, sorry. Like attend a work group meeting as identified in the inquiry phase. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause like when they come to office hours, they <clears throat> can ask you like, I'm interested in doing software development. And then we can point them and say, great, go to the auger working group meetings, or I'm interested in developing metrics models. Great, go ahead and attend the metrics model meeting. Like we can start actually like kind of physically pointing people to, to attend. Um, and we do, we really just say four times in a row. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> no, no, Matt, that's not too much to ask. I'm trying to yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, you want to encourage that repeat because otherwise you're not going to have repeat contributors. You're just going to have people that poke in and don't feel like they have an obligation to help. Yeah. So this is just in that kind of, this isn't even to the contribution step yet. This is still just in participating. And so my thought is, is with the, just attending the working group meeting, like, you just start hearing, you see the people who are at the meeting, you hear the language that's being used at the meeting, you see the interactions of people in the meeting, you mm -hmm. get a sense of what they're talking about in the meeting. Like, it's just so hard to contribute right away when you don't even know, like, the the norms of the group. You don't, because every, every one of our working groups is a little bit different. Um, you don't know quite where the needs are. And so just listening can help a ton. It's just something you can do. And it's just, it's pretty lightweight. And I feel like we're actually, I don't know about you, Elizabeth, but I feel like we're getting this type of participation in the community call sometimes. And I feel like we even had it in the badging call today where there's people who are just attending just to listen. And we don't ask them to, to contribute. We don't give them an action item. We just, just... Bye. I was still uncaffeinated. That's why you weren't hearing from me. No, you <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Some of these are early. I do require <laughs> that from you, Katie. <laughs> my facial recognition doesn't work on my computer until I've after had my first cup of coffee. So uh, <laughs> Wow, I, I, I like that hack. <laughs> um, and then, you know, join the associated Slack channel. That's it. There's every uh, one of our working groups has a Slack channel. It's none of them are very noisy, to be honest with you. Which is so good. Maybe, um, or in uh, general. And question about the Slack channel. Did the thing go away that says there's no meetings today on the calendar? Like for a while, there had been a thing that would say there are these meetings today. And then it, if there were no meetings, it said there are no meetings today. It still shows up in general. I was considering turning that off for the I, holidays. I think it's useful because especially around this time of year, you're like, wait, is there a meeting or no? And I went to the general channel. Oh, it was canceled. And that was like right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So that was okay. really useful actually to have going. Okay, then I'll leave it up. Uh, if people are getting use out of it, I just didn't want it to be annoying. So yeah. Maybe we give people a way to, or, or like point them to how to mute that if they don't want to see it or something like that. I don't know. You can, um, if during the holidays, you can remind people if you, if you, want to quiet your chat during the holidays, um, you can silence the channel and just check in on it, check on, in on it daily instead of getting push notifications. That's what I do most of the time. Otherwise I would have 10,000 Slack teams sending me messages every two minutes. Yeah. 
There's stuff in the chat too. Okay. Um, so I, what do people think of just like these two things? Like we just say, just find your niche in the chaos project, find your spot. Cause like open source projects have so much real estate. Like they just take up so much space and it's just so hard to say, I want to contribute to chaos. Like you got to find that, that smaller space that's meaningful to you. And that would be identified here mm -hmm. and then encouraging to go to those, that actual like spot, Elizabeth. I, I was just going to say, do we want to also point them to that team's chart in the first phase of inquiry and exploring? I know we want to do that like in the office hours, but you know, not everybody can attend those. So just kind of having that, yeah. of, like, here's a list of all the teams. Here's where you can join. Mm -hmm. Just have a look at it. See if anything jumps out of you is something you might find interesting. That would we be, can... yeah. And I think this would be useful, like particularly for the first two columns, Like, don't worry about. <laughs> yes. Right. Don't maybe, maybe those. examples types of contributions maybe of like what kind of skills you would need to contribute to that but yeah um but yeah. this is just a, a really high level overview of what each of our kind of like locations in the chaos project works on and maybe we can reorganize as i'm looking at this it's pretty long it <laughs> maybe is pretty we can long. organize it a little better of like here's some working groups that work on metrics here's some software projects here's you know just as like a little bit better one, well, I think too, yeah, it might be nice to like the contact name is helpful, but for a newcomer, I could see how it would be a lot to say, I'm just going to reach out, for example, directly to Armstrong and ask, <laughs> like there, there, there might be some. Well, I, th I think tell them, you know, like some of our repos, like Augur has a, you know, they'll take you on and help you do your first contribution. <clears throat> like there can be paths. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the. the so Sean, that's kind of this. This is like okay. we would encourage them to, if they're interested in Augur, then go to Augur and they'll help you. Like you'll they'll they'll listen to you. you yeah. I mean? yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Okay. Now I get it. So this is like there are so many newcomers that come on the channel that I think are yep. new open source. Yeah. Just period. <laughs> just like they want to yeah. participate in open source as a way yeah. to make contributions and be part of a community but that's my feeling yeah yeah as, um, as a quick aside to to that yeah. point do we need to have um some like other little mini level in there of like here's an intro to open source 101 of like how open source works if you're not familiar do we need to have that like as a parallel track or like some maybe, kind of other resource maybe that would be in here maybe it's just a discussion that could come up during office hours yeah okay gotcha <laughs> Just kind of a random side note on that list, the DEI badging. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm maybe I'm put that list. closer to the DEI working group because it kind of is a subset. Yeah, this list is in, in no order whatsoever. Yeah, but those <laughs> kind of go on together because the one is kind of a subset of the other. Yeah, Anita. Yeah, um, I just wanted to chip in on what Elizabeth said earlier. We can have like a recording of what open source is, how to get into open source, and then just put it on our YouTube channel. So we can just refer people there whenever they come in and we don't have to like repeat the same thing at every meeting or something like that. Good idea. Yeah, oh, you don't want to perfect your elevator pitch? <clears throat> I guess not. Throw out some thoughts on here. Is that okay? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah that'd be wonderful. <laughs> um, one thing you could do instead of saying like, hey, attend four meetings, you mm -hmm. could you can work on like put this meeting on your calendar. It's kind of pre-commitment, and it's yeah. more people are more likely to follow through if they pre-commit to something versus where I had the same problem. Like I didn't join for several weeks because I was like, oh, well, I, you know, I didn't put it on my calendar. Then I put it on my calendar. It it alerts me. OK, because I'm not always on Slack or it doesn't if I'm in the right channel, if I'm in a different workspace or something like that. So kind of like what is that pre-commitment action? I love it. Do yeah. this. Put this on your calendar. That's it. 
Yeah, you know, like thing, one yeah. thing. Yeah, the other thing we've done when we're like doing like teaming agreements is, hey, go watch this video, go do this, go read this, go join this Slack channel. Now, test. Now do us. You know, we did a Slack bot that said, "Did you do all these things?" And it would ask you like you would do like a little uh, quiz like. Uh, yes, I have done this. I've attended four meetings. I've done yep. this. Great. You are ready to contribute, you know, so you could have a little like it. Slack bot or it's like a little, you know, could be fun, like a little, it, you know, not a serious, but like a little quiz. Like, did you, um, uh, you can make it kind of, we made it like, you know, uh, goofy, right? Like, did you, uh, you know, what's, what's the Slack channel you should, uh, you should have joined. And then you'd put in all these like funny answers and stuff like that. So do you, you know, have this spot? Well, I did it for my work, but I could. Is it somewhere out in the internet no. that we could? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I could give you kind of like a brief idea of like, well, how did it work? You know, um, but it, you know, um, it wasn't built with anything special other than the workflow builder, you know, and it didn't do anything. It just was like a quiz, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it was like, it was kind of like, if you say, go watch this open source video and there's something, fun, you know, something you should have taken away from that video, the quiz would say, you know, um, open source is blah, blah, blah. And you'd have, a, you know, four answers and like, you know, you can just make them funny and goofy so that like, you know, that A is the answer, but um and people liked it because you know it was kind of like a little entertaining thing and then they tested their knowledge and some people got it wrong but it was no not well hard. that i like this too because this kind of ties back to you know how we have that newbie bot you know what i mean that's yeah. like you can take newbie and it points you to some resources i mean we could have another bot which is like instead of just adding it to the newbie bot elizabeth but it would like be a bot called ready to contribute bot that's a terrible name but so, something like that Am I ready you know what I mean? And you could just type a small phrase and the bot would just interact with you and ask you these series of questions. And, mm -hmm. and to that point, I know that there's desire to take that newbie bot and the badging bot and like kind of lump them together under one big chaos bot umbrella. So yeah. like maybe that that uh, quiz bot could be a component of that as well. So like just everything would kind of match together. But so I, I, I think that what I'm saying is I think it aligns perfectly with like yeah. some like long term thoughts about that stuff. Um, I can kind of draft up and show like what we did in a in a way that's like sanitized, you know, if you um if if you could do that, Eric, maybe you could just like put a link in here, like make a Google Doc. Yeah, I'd make a little graph or whatever or just put it right in here. In here. Sweet. Thank you. Um, the only last thing uh, I'll say is like, is there, um, like if I were to join a job or, or uh, not join a job, if I were to join a company, the first thing I would be given is, hey, this person is your guide. If you have any questions, talk to this person, this person, this one person. <laughs> I don't know if this community is big enough or has that, you know, ca capacity, but, or capability, but I think it would be helpful. Like, I don't I know. I agree. We have, <laughs> we have talked about that and yeah. we do, like part of this is helping alleviate some of that for Elizabeth. Cause as the community manager, yeah. she answers a lot of, it can't be all her and Anita, Anita's got her hand raised. I don't know if she had a comment on that or something else. No, no, I just forgot to drop my hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was from Sorry. an older one. Um, and we have, Eric, we've talked about like, we've talked about exactly this. Uh, we've called them tour guides, you know, that you would have a, a guide that could show people around. We just, to your last point, we just haven't been able to overcome the amount of time and effort that that would take potentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, to say, who in who of the thousand people here? Um, tour guide? Yes. And if I mean, no one that, does, that's a problem. <laughs> to that point, though, we have had folks stepping up in the newcomers channel that are doing this organically. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking of Mary Blessing for one. 
um, she just naturally just started welcoming folks, even though she's relatively new to chaos, she just started welcoming folks in as well. Like, hey, I'm, you know, great to have you here. So I wonder if there's a, a way to kind of build a like a, a mini a mini community of those folks that want that role or like just naturally kind of dig that work of like being that kind of welcoming person. So maybe maybe that's a way where we like kind of make it an actual team or make it an actual thing. Sure. And, and, if, official. People, and if people want to opt into it and do enjoy doing that work. Yeah, no. It's, um... and, you know, because I'm thinking of like how we are building the the team of, of reviewers for the badging program. We call them badgers. They have a little identity. They have a space. They have a role. They have a, a like a, a place at chaos, like a, a, lab, a label, if you will, like they can identify with something. And so like having that kind of a, a team also or they maybe get a little funny name they get like a, a their own like onboarding thing of like here's how you become a, a, a friendly face or whatever we want to call it like a team of onboarders exactly anita and just you know whoever wants to be on that team great then you know then we can like kind of do a little like big brother big sister or like matchmaking kind of uh you know um, activity and then make sure that that they have yeah I, yeah i really really actually like that a lot eric that's yeah what do y'all yeah. think i think it was completely my idea so i'm like <laughs> no. yeah. any prior go. discussions never happened that's right it, it was all uh, yeah. <laughs> isn't there a like mentorship working group not i really. saw it on the list yeah it's more ad hoc for like google summer of code and things like yeah. that I mean, it's a little more intensive than like, I don't know if we want to call them mentors. That seems like a little bit more of a long term kind of commitment. I don't know, though. What do you all think? Yeah, the mentors, we, that's for like She Code Africa, Outreachy, Google Summer of Code, Season of Docs. And that, Sounds, that, those are pretty intense. It's more lightweight, like a concierge. They're, they're the... Um... They're the smile sticker greeters at Walmart. <laughs> hey, why don't maybe um, Elizabeth, maybe and Eric, if you want to be part of anybody, I guess we could do it on the Slack channel. Uh, join the Slack channel. <laughs> um, but I, I like this idea. I think maybe we would think through like how we would invite people. We might want to also, you know, to be the greeters. Um, like it's to your point, Elizabeth, like how we kind of build small community, like around the badgers, like how we would go about doing that. And the, and we might want to think through a little bit like the timeline of our expectations. So for example, the badgers, like two years ago, it was a pretty small group of people and it's kind of evolved over time to become this really tight group. And it's, it's grown in the number of reviewers that we have. Um, to provide the badger. So we might want to think about that too. And then maybe the last thing is like, how if somebody's feeling overwhelmed, <laughs> we can help them or... Yeah. And, and, you know, and what's funny is like, we kind of have that framework already set in for the reviewers and we could just like take that model and like plop it over here. So like, if you're a reviewer, you can choose to just kind of go, mm -hmm. go on vacay for a little while, or you can mm -hmm. choose to be an occasional person or we call it, this is terrible, we call it normal. <laughs> if you want to be a normal rotation, then you're going to get called up a lot, but we could probably think of a different name for that. Um, but then we have the occasional ones that are like, if you need me, I'm here, <laughs> a normie, right? Um, that's from, from that show, yes. Anyway. Um, Wednesday, I've been watching. I, I love that show. It's so cool. I binged uh, it. I binged I it in it. like two days. I love yeah. it. it. You know what's really cute that my fam has been watching is the Santa Clauses. Oh yes. It is so it's basically Tim Tim Allen retiring as Santa and <clears throat> sorry, we digress, but yeah. but yeah, we have that framework for like giving people space to kind of set their own level of commitment to being this in this role. So um if you want, I can like kind of draft it like a proposal of what that might look like if we were to take that model that we're using for the badgers and put it over here in the onboarders what do you think yeah i mean it certainly is a, a starting point yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay cool 
Another question really quick on those subset of people. Um, do we want to, um, is there a time where we need to do another round of notes going out to everybody? Maybe. Like little appreciation, thank you. Oh, Elizabeth, no. the Badger stuff. Oh, for Badgers? Oh, I think we're good for now. Okay. Maybe like maybe in the summer of next year or something. Yeah, it, yeah, I think we're good for now. At that point, can I put together like a Google survey and tell people if they want something to fill out the Google survey that only I would see the results to? Sure. Because then I would actually get the right format of their addresses and know I'm sending it to the right place. Yeah, we can streamline that process for sure. Okay, this is this is getting really well, or this is moving along nicely. I think there's a few things that are happening here. One is kind of the specific set of things that we tell newcomers to do. That's these one through three right here. And then these things are like how, how we can kind of support the newcomers in that process. Is, um, seems like two slightly, they're related obviously, but two slightly different things that we have to think about. How often do we get first time contributors? Or like, or people that would hit that, fill out the quiz, get started point? That? Yeah, oh. like how, how many people, how frequently do we get to people to the point where we might need a mentor for them? Oh, I see what you're saying. I can't answer that. I don't know. My gut feeling is we have uh, at least at least one newcomer a day joining the Slack channel, but from there, I'm not sure. Um, and I think part of it is because folks are going in so many different directions, it's kind of hard to know. And I don't necessarily have, like as one person, have visibility into every single piece. Mm -hmm. So like the, I'm thinking of like the Chaos Africa designers team, which is pretty specific, but like I know they're always having new people come on and I try to watch the Slack channel to see, um, I would say maybe in that, yeah, so it, it's hard to like put a number, I think, across the chaos. That's a really great question. See, I just wonder what the commitment on that would be for them or if, if people, if there's a way to track when people hit a certain number of points of contribution or when there's a certain level of activity. Excellent questions. Metrics. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so can I go back to this list? Okay. Yes. So let's pretend that that happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that we actually the supplemental materials is kind of something that we would have to do. Let's pretend that they come to an open office hours, a new newcomer, and they attend a monthly onboarding call. They're like, awesome. And they identify a working group that they would particularly like to engage in, um, you know, through conversations with you, Elizabeth, and also Ruth, and, you know, with this list to kind of help orient them. Um, but maybe part of that conversation is like, maybe don't do, like as a, as a newcomer, don't do all of them. Just kind of pick one as a starter. Yeah. Of particular interest to you. Um, and then they go ahead and they put this, they put the meeting on their calendar, which is a great idea to kind of um, set it. Uh, they attend whatever it is for of the working group meetings. Um, and they also join the Slack channel. So they're kind of, they've accomplished these things and they're getting connected with the particular working group in the chaos project that is of interest to them. Um, the hope is then that within the working group itself, so whether it's Augur, Sean, or like badging Elizabeth or metrics models, me, you know what I mean? That, that, the particular working groups, maybe it's these folks here that we talked to specifically, say, listen, this is kind of what we're doing. <laughs> we're encouraging people to come your way, just FYI. Um, and you, I, I, maybe at this point, we need to think about like, what are the things that we would ask the newcomer to do within the working group? Is it, is it hang out and wait for an action item that looks 
um, acceptable to them. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a nice first action item, say like issuing a pull request against some documentation or it's a, you know, doing a bug fix in Augur, something that's kind of easy to, to do right out of the gate. So what are people's thoughts on, on kind of this? Once they're in the community, there's kind of still that next step of, or I'm sorry, once they're in the working group, there's kind of that next step of, of really trying to, to encourage a contribution to that working group. So I can say that Ruth is really great about this. Um, she just assigns people things. <laughs> so like, for instance, like Chaos Africa, um, Eric, for uh, just for context, Ruth is the community lead for our Chaos Africa. Um, and she's awesome. And she's usually here, but I'm sure she probably had a conflict today. Um, but anyway, so she, they, they decided they wanted to create some content around Chaos Africa to get the buzz out. So they made together a list, uh, like a document of all of the different kind of articles they want to write, blog posts, whatever. And then she just assigned people. And I don't know if she was like, who wants to do this? Or if she was like, no, I think you can do this one. You're doing this one. Like, because in the doc, it just shows her like listing names next to each one. Um, <laughs> but I think she's pretty good about like, yeah, here, this is the thing that you can do that you should do right here. And like, don't worry about anything else. Like, this is your task. And now you have something to do. And I don't know if that works for everybody. I don't know um, if, if that's like too overwhelming for folks. I tend to be more of one like if you see something you're passionate about, jump in. But if you don't, that's cool. You know, wait for whatever. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Different approaches. That's pretty. I didn't know she did that. That's great. Can each working group kind of define what that is? Like, yep. hey, we need four steps. What? First step is, and maybe for this person you were talking about is, sit here and listen. Second step is, in the second meeting, say something. You know, nod your head. You know, and and just say like, here's here's the model. There's four steps. You fill them in, and each working group has defines how they want people to progress through. Right? Is it? I don't know. No, that makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense because I can I can see like Sean, for instance, in the risk working group, like that dynamic is a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of regulars. It's a lot of like deep dive conversation. And so someone coming in to that group is going to be like, whoa, this is a lot. I yeah. think. But yeah. like here, you know, I mean, it's pretty chill. And like in this working group, we, we really want it to be a spot for newcomers to kind of come in and feel like. You can participate today. So I'm glad you did, Eric. I'm glad you felt like you could. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah. That's our goal. Like, so yay, go us. But um, so can, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to just kind of let it maybe happen organically or like let the working group kind of figure that out. Yeah, but if you give them like a just fit into this like model, but you know, here's the mad lib. Put, you know, fill in what you want in the mad lib for your working group, but then as I'm looking through, or I imagine, as I'm looking through working groups, you're like, mm. here's the whatever three steps or something. I could I could start to piece together. Oh, that group is chill. That works with me. That group is intense. I'm not so certain. I'm going to do that. <laughs> or vice versa. That's oh, that's definitely what I want to get into. You know, without. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I really like this because it ties in obviously directly with this. So we're like, as as this group kind of here on this call, we're saying, listen, go attend four meetings at a particular working group. Like that's kind of, that's our recommendation. That said, it's up to the working groups to kind of specify what those four meetings might look like for newcomers. I think this is where you're going with this, Eric. Like, and right, because for us to specify what those four meetings would look like from our position is probably not appropriate just because as we've said every working group functions a little bit differently um and the example you gave with ruth like ruth might say you know if you join the if you join the working groups that, that we're running here be prepared to have an action item assigned to you by week one or week two <laughs> like it's gonna happen yeah. which is that's cool i mean that that might be exactly what people are looking for versus um like common the common working group that only meets every two weeks, we're like, listen, it's going to be a two month process for you to, to go through four meetings. Um, 
you know, we don't have a lot of new metrics. What we're doing is just revising a lot of metrics. So here are the things that we think you could help. I like that idea a lot. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of asking the working groups. And just specify like every working group, the first meeting is like, like a safe space where uh, that's the commonality is that the first meeting, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You can you don't even have to listen if you want to. You just know that, you know, hang out. No one is going to ask you to do anything. But, you know, second and third, maybe it's depending on how that working group wants to work, right? I don't know. No, I, also, you guys, I like that too. I just, uh, I was just going to say that I like that too, because this also kind of leans on the expectation that somebody is joining the working group with the desire to contribute. That's, I mean, <laughs> but that's why they're there. They've kind of gone through those first few steps with an interest in getting to the contribution pace. So I'm sorry, Sean or Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I don't think I had anything. I was just going to um, second my support for the, I think Eric, you called it the Mad Libs, where you're like, we would give the working group, here's, here's two sentences or three sentences, fill in the blanks as how it pertains to your group. And that way it's kind of like consistent and <clears throat> gives them a starting point where they don't have to just write something from scratch. People love Mad Libs. I do love Mad Libs. They're awesome. Hilarious. Can we add that to the quiz bot? Just a, ma a random Mad Libs. I, I want that. It's called the Mad Libs bot. <laughs> love it. I'm sure it's out there. Um, this is great. I, I really like this. Thank you. This is because um, and, and really like like I was saying, this is a, a really great handoff to the working group. Like we're just trying to this is the funnel part, right? We're just trying to take the one a day in the newcomer Slack channel and <laughs> get them down to an opportunity to contribute in the working group that's of particular interest to them. Um, I really like that. And so I'm wondering too here, like Elizabeth, if like the Mad Libs could show up here. That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, just have that available somewhere or in the newbie bot, you know, wherever we wanna put it. I also think that it might be beneficial to bring together this group of team leaders for like a one-time call, just to kind of go over all of this stuff. Yeah. So that they all get the same kind of message of what we're trying to do and how we we're hoping that this whole thing works. What do you think about that? I would be way more efficient than one of us attending every working group meeting. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just to like set the expectations <laughs> of like, okay, we're gonna try to make this a little smoother for folks, like uh, like kind of officially make it smoother for everybody instead of yeah. just like, woo, and, come whatever, we don't know. To, and we're trying to bring newcomers to you. Like the, I know that a lot of the working groups, you know how open source is, like they become kind of the same people, you know, for a while. <laughs> and it's nice to I think I don't think there would be a single working group that would say, nah, not super interested in newcomers. <laughs> to, no, to, I don't to, think uh, that's a whole other conversation we're gonna have to have with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Listen to me. <laughs> Problems we don't have. I really like this. Um I like it on so many different levels. I think it it gives newbies a really great set of things to do like really pragmatic things to do i think it gives our group um things to do as well like things to think about as part of that that journey um and then lastly i think it it hands off to working groups a real opportunity to connect with newcomers in to kind of shorten that distance between joining the slack channel and actually getting a contribution in a working group, because right now that distance is just really far. <laughs> hey, Sean, just to that kind of point, is there an auger meeting that y'all have on the regular that we can, or what, like what's your- Yeah, point? yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna do one meeting more, more in the, in the end of okay. next month, next Monday. And then they'll, I, I sped the cadence up a little bit because there were some people who were interested and we didn't have a lot of time before the holidays, but I'm going to, I'll shoot for at least a monthly cadence and maybe every two weeks, but not every okay. week. Okay. I can't, I can't sustain that going forward. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs>
Okay, so we're, we're really basically at the end of time here. So maybe just over break, we could, could, would it be okay if I move some of this conversation or thoughts to the Slack channel? Um, Cause it would be great to come back after break with maybe just a few things like a, maybe like a more formal document that kind of pulls out these points that aren't just embedded in notes. Um, that we could speak to and and start sharing. Think about how we're going to share that with people. And that would work for me. Okay. Right on. All right. Look at that. We we did the whole meeting <laughs> with some some great insights from everybody. Thank you so much for this. I I really feel pretty pretty positive about all of this. This is pretty cool. Um, great. All right. Well, everybody, uh, last DEI meeting for a while. We'll see you in, in January, unless we see you on Slack. Enjoy time off if you have some time off and whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Happy New Year. Likewise, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy birthday. <laughs> Bye. Take whatever. Care, everybody. That's <laughs> what Frosty said. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. I'm headed up to Nebraska where there is cold and snow. So <laughs> when are you coming? Um, I will be up there the 23rd through the 30th. Okay. Well, if I'll you... be in Omaha on Christmas. <laughs> Wait, where are you going to be otherwise? Lincoln. Oh, okay. I was going to say we should have a coffee or something, but well, if you if you want to come into, I often meet Georg in Lincoln for coffee at the mill. If okay. you wanted yeah. to come and join us. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just keep me posted. I'm okay. We've yeah. got the guests I... coming in, and you know what I mean, all that kind of stuff. Bye. I, wor I work from the mill like okay, yeah i know exactly whenever i downtown whenever i'm not um with family so. okay. okay right on okay well cool just keep me posted send me a note okay, okay. i'll let you know see you katie you too bye, bye.